Hi, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is Mr. Dwayne Smotherson. We'll be talking about some development in University City that you may be interested in today on The Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. As I promised you, my guest is Wayne Smotherson from University City. Wayne, it's good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Always good to see you, man. Yes, sir. So, so tell us what, uh, you're a councilman in University City, right? I am. Third I Ward? Am third Ward City Councilman, yes, sir. Okay. Wayne, well, I uh, read in the St. Louis American, June 21st through 27th edition, it says Olive slash I-170 redevelopment has potential to benefit University City. Now, the... I uh, see that Joy Lieberman wrote that uh, particular article. And she says, unless our city creates a new revenue source, it won't be long before we have an entire city at risk. What does that mean, and, and what do you know about this? Well, I think what she's actually explaining is that you city has been dormant for, and, and I say dormant for many years, mm -hmm. and, in reference to development. And, and the city government, the property owners in University City along the Olive Corridor, haven't really actually been successful in bringing development and economic development to University City. Mm -hmm. So this project is actually going to, this project is actually going to uh, bring that economic development to University City and put us uh, and make us currently competitive with the surrounding communities south of us like Clayton and, and Richmond Heights and Maplewood, also west of us like Olivet and Creve mm -hmm. Corps. Okay. Uh, lately I see more and more people driving by says, home prices in our third ward have not only failed to recover from the 2008 housing slump, but in many cases are now worth less than they were at the recession of this lowest point. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that's absolutely correct. And we actually have a graph that actually shows that. Mm -hmm. and, and what's happened since the recession, the housing stock in the first and second wards mm -hmm. recovered. Okay, so what does that graph show? And that graph is actually showing how the uh, housing stock recovered in the first and second ward, mm -hmm. but has not recovered in the third ward. And, and so that's one of the benefits that this, this development is going to bring to the third ward residents of University City. What are the boundaries of the third ward in University City? The boundaries of the third ward in University City are Sutter to 170, Mm -hmm. And Sutter is S on, Sutter the, on the east. Right? Sutter is on the east. Okay. 170 on the west. Olive Boulevard on the south side, mm -hmm. and and I would say the boundaries of Pagedale and Wellston okay. are on the north side of the third ward. That's a large chunk of University City. That's a large chunk of University <laughs> City. Yes, sir. It is. You know. Um, so what kind of development are you talking about? Are you talking about home redevelopment? You're talking, you're talking about new bridges. Talking about new 170. Corridor what? Well, the type of development that we're actually bringing is commercial development. Okay. Because one of the things that U City lacks is the revenue source from commercial businesses, and when I say lack, is is it's not that we don't receive um, the revenue from the commercial businesses, but I, I think what what's happened with University City is that we haven't taken advantage of the the economic advantages that other commercial developments in Maplewood, Richmond Heights, and uh, Brentwood have brought to their cities. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to bring to University City, just a taste of that economic injection that the other cities have brought to their cities. Okay, in Lieberman's column, she says, uh, tangential uh, to the situation in Washington, is Washington University's land purchases, which have decimated the tax rolls, negatively affected our schools and city services, and has thus contributed to the problem in the most vulnerable portion of our city. So university, uh, Washington University is, is land grabbing a lot? What's well, happening? they are, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I can't, and there's no way to really stop that. Washington University is, is exempt. Once they purchase that property because of their nonprofit status, they are exempt, and they and that means that they don't. That once that property is obtained, they, it's off the tax rolls for University City, wow. which affects the residents, which affects the school district, and ref, and actually affects the city services. Okay, are you offering any uh, TIF incentives or any kind of incentives uh, for people to come in to build? 
Hallelujah. Yes, we are. And, and, and we are actually offering the TIF. We are. Um, and tax, increment. tax increment financing to the developer. And the developer's name is Novus. Okay, okay. And that president is Jonathan Brown. Mm -hmm. And we are offering that. And, and actually, our last meeting of the TIF Commission would be August 23rd. So what are the people of University City saying about this? I saw a couple of stories on news, okay. you know, local news channels. And uh, it showed a big piece of University City with the going through 170 and expanding west and just east of that. And uh, so are people uh, excited about this or disliking it or what? Well, I, I think that the, uh, the majority of the citizens in the Third Ward and the citizens in University City are excited about this project. Mm -hmm. And I think they do support this project. But, of course, you're going to always have a certain number of people that are against the project and, uh, and against it development coming to University City. Mm -hmm. And so that, that small number of, of, of people are actually making the most noise and doing, having the most activities in the media okay. and expressing their concerns and their uh, objection to this project. Are these the homeowners? The, the owner said the 67 homes or 62 homes might have to be bought? No, 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 no. These aren't homeowners that are actually coming because the homeowners are actually mostly in favor of really? this, of this okay. development. Okay. Because the, 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 the developer is offering more than double the price of their homes. So most of them are in favor of the development okay. and are ready to move on. And, and, and what University City is doing is, is incentivizing the, the homeowners to stay in University City and find homes in the Third Ward or in University City at, at large. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and you've been a, a Third Ward council person. Uh, uh, are people talking to you about what they... Every day. Yeah. Every day, yes, sir. <laughs> Every day. Give me a little feedback. Well, what they're asking, I've, I've had people that are calling and just verifying what effect will this have on my home? What okay. effect will this have on my property value? What mm -hmm. effect will this have on my property taxes? And so those are concerns that people ask and I get questions every day about that. And what, what I tell them is that what we're simply trying to do is bring the value up in the third ward mm -hmm. and, allowing the, and allowing that value and the third ward residents to, to, to take advantage of the equity that they are going to build in their homes. Mm -hmm. The equity that they don't have right now and that the other wards have. You have that in the first ward. You have that in the second ward. But what we're trying to do is bring an equal uh, equity lens to mm -hmm. the third ward. Okay. How can they reach you to get you there uh, to talk about it? Well, I, my, my number, my phone number is published. I'm, I, I live at 1243 Purdue, and my phone number is 314-726-9572. Okay, so people who may be slow writing that or need to get a pen, would you repeat that in a little bit slower, I can please? repeat that again. <laughs> my home number is 314-726-9572. Okay, and they can call you anytime and ask you about the... Anytime, and ask, and, any, and I'm, I'm there available uh, to answer questions. Okay. Now, the Third Ward itself has a lot of uh, businesses going up and down Olive Street, don't they? That's correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. That's correct. Right. So, well, They're small businesses. That's yeah. correct. So with this, uh, how would it impact these small businesses on Olive Street already? Well, there actually is a small number of businesses that are in the direct area of the development, and that direct area is called RPA-1. Okay. And also, which we and, don't know about, don't know. right? And and <laughs> it's 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 the development area RPA one. Now the there are a, a lot more businesses in the Olive Corridor that are east of that development area, okay. and that's literally referred to as RPA three. But that's the Olive Corridor. Okay. And and what's going to happen is that right now nothing is going to happen to those businesses. There are no businesses in the Olive Corridor, which is RPA three, that are going to be affected in reference to displacement having to move or are, are having any effect on their their businesses as of right now. Okay. Because what we're trying to do with that RPA3 area is inject funds from this TIF. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use that TIF and that subsidy to act to invest into the third ward and that Olive Corridor. Okay, we're going to come back and talk more about this. Okay. And I want to come back and talk about your family too. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you. That's fine. <laughs> All right. We're located 2428 Woodson Road in, in Overland, Missouri. And we used to be, as you know, it's 1411 Locust Street in downtown St. Louis. But Reverend Larry Rice is still trying to get that facility back open. 
And, uh, but in the meantime, the same services that were provided there are now provided from 24, 28 Woodson Road in, uh, in uh, Overland, Missouri. But and you can stop by and, and bring by clothing. You know, they're still paying utility bills, pills, and everything that was going on from downtown doing now. But we need your help and support because we're getting no federal funds, no city funds, nothing. Only contributions that the new life receive are from you. And they're all tax deductible. And you may do it online at uh, www.newlifeevangelisticcenter.org and the Ex American Express, MasterCard, Visa, Discover Card takes less than two minutes and everything is tax deductible. We'll be back with Wayne Smotherson after this. You can help New Life Evangelistic Center break the cycle of homelessness by providing monies for Metrolink tickets. It's absolutely essential at this time. New Life Evangelistic Center is providing hundreds of Metrolink tickets every week to homeless people so they can get to their jobs, so they can get to their doctor appointments, so they can find a place to sleep at nights. Will you please share your much-needed tax-deductible gift with the New Life Evangelistic Center? Every $30 you provide enables New Life to get 10 of the Metrolink tickets. And you can send those gifts now to the New Life Evangelistic Center at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. These individuals are having to walk so far at this moment, and a Metrolink ticket means so very much. And not only does New Life Evangelistic Center desire to provide for the homeless throughout the greater St. Louis area, but also throughout the Springfield community. Your gifts are very much needed at this time. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Thank you for praying, caring, and sharing at this moment. Thus has the Lord of hosts said, dispense true justice and practice kindness and compassion each to his brother. And do not oppress the widow or the orphan, the stranger or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. For just 80 cents a day, you can help many people in need all around the world. That's only $24 a month. The New Life Evangelistic Center wants you to help feed the hungry and shelter the homeless by joining Club 24. For $24 a month, you can be a part of touching people's lives. For just 80 cents a day, you can make a difference in someone's life. Call 314-881-3210 or give online at newlifeevangelisticcenter.org. And welcome back. My guest is Boyne Smotherson. Uh, the University City. He's a third ward council person in University City. And uh, Mr. Smotherson, you were talking about this side development, redevelopment uh, in, out between Olive, the corridor, and I-70. But, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they think about University City, they talk about the Del Mar Divide. Right. You know, right. Uh, right. like black folks north of uh, <laughs> Del Mar, black That's white right. folks That's south right. of Del Mar. That's right. Uh, yes, is there really a Del Mar Divide? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. And that Del Mar Divide, I, as, as, as far as I know, is um, actually in University City mm -hmm. has extended over to Olive. And it, and then the Del Mar Divide is actually in an Olive Divide in University City. Okay. So there is a divide because there's a big discrepancy between the income in the third ward and, and which is north of Olive. Mm -hmm. And the income levels in the second and first ward, which is south of Olive. Okay. So the, the, this, and that graph that you showed, I guess that uh, is one of the reasons why the third ward is not developing as fast as the first ward one or ward two. Yes, sir. And that's absolutely correct. Uh, mm -hmm. The housing stock in the third ward hasn't recovered the way that the housing stock has in the first and second ward. Mm -hmm. And one piece of history that I will give you is that mm -hmm. in, you know, Harriet Woods years ago fought for uh, fought to stop the realtors from guiding black folks to north of Olive. Sure. And my family was actually part of that in the 68 and late 60s when we moved out to University City. And we were only, my family explained, my mother explained this and my father explained it, that they were only allowed and only shown houses north of Olive. Sure. And that's part of the reason why we live right on the north side of Olive on Purdue. Yeah. We were... I remember Harry was, we were very good friends. We worked together at University of Missouri, St. Louis, actually. And uh, uh, I was living there in yes, 1965, right. right there in the Third Ward That's at right. University That's of City. Right. Uh, Smotherson, Smotherson, that name rings a bell. I once knew a 
Reverend Melvin Smotherson. Yes, sir. Do you know him? Yes, sir. That was my father. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And he passed in 2015. Yeah. But yes, sir. That's that's my father. Tell us about Reverend Mother Smotherson, please, and your family. You know, Smotherson well, family. my my family uh, is uh, Geraldine Smotherson, and I have a, a younger brother named Dan, Reverend Darren Smotherson, Reverend. who actually is the pastor of First Baptist Church in Meacham Park. Okay. And, uh, and that's key to this development because of the development that happened in Meacham Park. And my sister is Pam Smotherson. And, uh, and again, my father, Reverend Melvin Smotherson, uh, was pastor originally of First Baptist Church in Creve Corps yeah. many years ago. And, and also then became pastor of Washington Tabernacle in right on Compton in St. Louis City, right? right. Washington yeah. and Compton. Yeah. And, uh, and then moved on and started and founded the church, Cornerstone Institutional Baptist Church, right. before he passed. I remember. Yes, sir. So, so why did you uh, follow in your dad's perceptions is because you're a musician, aren't you? I'm a musician. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm a musician. And, and I think that's where God led me okay. to become. And, yeah, not, right. and again, I think God, it, it skipped me and it went and hit my brother and he okay. became a pastor. Yes, that's sir. Wonderful. So how did you get involved in public service? Why? Well, I got involved in public service actually with uh, being involved with a neighborhood, uh, a neighborhood group called Partridge Heights Neighborhood Association. Okay. And I started helping my mother with that group and, and doing activities around our neighborhood. And then and that's how I became more aware of how the city services were being provided to the Third Ward. Mm -hmm. And also became aware of the activities of, of city government more okay. so then. Okay, so... How long have you been a councilman? I've been a councilman now for uh, two years, okay. and this is actually in the, I'm into my third year. Mm -hmm. I was elected in 2016. Right. Okay. And uh, so when does it expire? It expires in 2020. Okay. So you'll be running again, I assume, in 2020. <laughs> I, I, I probably will be running again in 2020. Yes, sir. So in your own mind, in your own words, how important is this redevelopment along Olive and I in 170 to you? And to the people, your constituents. Well, what I would actually say is this development is probably the biggest thing to hit University City in decades. Uh, I think this is a defining moment for University City in the future of economic development in University City and in the future of revenue and the services that will be brought to University City by this development. Mm -hmm. And so it is, uh, again, as I said, I think this is the biggest thing to hit University City in decades. Okay. So uh, this graph that uh, Bob Demler just put up on board says redevelopment benefits. Do you have brochures, more brochures that they can get? Yes. How, how can I get them? Yes, sir. They can actually get this and they can actually review this 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 document online mm -hmm. and on the U City website, ucitymo.org. Okay. And they can pull that up. And, and we actually have it with a red dot so you can't miss the redevelopment information. It's right on the front page as soon as you pull up that website. And these 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 documents are available also at City Hall. Okay, University City City Hall. University City City Hall, yes, Can sir. they still get you, can call you for more information? They can always call me, and again, my phone number is 314-726-9572. What do you see as the future of University City, the whole city itself, and then the Third Ward in particular? Well, I, I see with this development, the future of University City is actually bringing better services mm -hmm. to the citizens of University City. Because for many years, University City's taxes were, were really dependent on the households that we have in University City. Yeah. And not so much the commercial businesses. And I think this is actually a big turnaround for University City in that now we're actually going to be able to bring commercial tax revenue to the city. That has never that the city has never seen before. Okay, and and I can give you just one example with this development that we're bringing, and, and there is a big box that's involved in it. That tenant is actually going to bring University City uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of tax revenue that we've never seen before. Okay, I think what's happening right now is University City in the area of the development, which is 170 on the west side. And Olive, I mean, I'm sorry, Woodson and McKnight on the east side of the development. Sure. That area on both sides, south and north of Olive Boulevard, actually probably right now bring in about six million in sale in revenue taxes for the city. Wow. Okay. The one tenant that we're bringing in brings in a hundred and six million <laughs> in sales tax revenue for the city. 
So that's, that's quite the, a jump. That's that's quite a jump. Yeah. And that doesn't even include the other developments that come in with that tenant. Okay. So that's the I think that's why I say that U City University City and its commercial area has been dormant in that area. And 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 now here we are waking up and now we're seeing the benefits of this development. Okay. I want to come back and ask you about uh, Joe Edwards and the trolley and the loop and how that's going to affect War Three okay. in University. Yes, sir. In the meantime, we're here uh, at 2428 Woodson Road in uh, Overland, Missouri. And uh, Reverend Larry Rice, as you know, has been here more than 50 years, going on 50 years. Not at this particular location, but here serving the homeless. And uh, we're trying to re reach out to all revenue funds that we can. You, you see this Bernie Hayes cup here? <clears throat> this mug can help actually sustain some programs here at New Life Evangelistic Center. It's a mug, and uh, for $25, you can get one. In fact, uh, here, Reverend Larry Harris will tell you about it. You're watching the Bernie Hayes Show. You want to help continue to support that program? You want us to be able to continue to keep getting it out? We need to get you directly involved at this time. And that's why I want to encourage you to share your $24 gift now. Yes, with the New Life Evangelistic Center at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, 63166. And our way of saying thank you for helping to keep the Bernie Hayes program on the air and helping us to get into the 1411 Locust Building to help the hurting and the homeless. We want to send you this very special Bernie Hayes mug. There's just a limited number of them, so you want to get involved now. So send your $24 gift. Include that note. We won't know that you want the mug if you don't include the note to the New Life Evangelistic Center. P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. And again, let's continue to keep Bernie on the air. And we can do that as you continue to pray for all of us here at New Life Evangelistic Center and support this work at this time. It's critical that we hear from you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, 63166. We'll be returning to our guests after this, but today I want to pay tribute to one of the trailblazers in the movie industry, Hattie McDaniel. Actress Hattie McDaniel was born June 10, 1893 in Wichita, Kansas. By the mid-20s, she became one of the first African-American women to perform in radio. In 1934, she landed her on-screen break in the film, Judge Priest. She then became the first African-American to win an Oscar in 1940 for her role as Mammy in Gone with the Wind. In 1947, her career did take a downturn. Her brother Sam and sister Ella convinced her to move to Los Angeles, where they had managed to procure minor movie roles for themselves. And during World War II, McDaniel helped entertain American troops and promoted the sale of bonds, but soon she found the film offers to be drying up. She responded by making a strategic returned to radio, taking over the starring role on CBS's radio's The Beulah Show in 1947. Ms. McDaniel, 1951, unexpectedly suffered a heart attack and uh, was forced to abandon her career after being diagnosed with breast cancer. Hattie McDaniel, our feature for today. Now you can take NLEC TV anywhere as you put the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. NLEC TV is an innovative TV station that's on the cutting edge of community service. When you tune in to NLEC TV, you'll discover a television station that has been operated by previously homeless individuals who have received broadcast training through New Life Evangelistic Center's unique on-the-job training program. On NLEC TV, you'll discover wholesome family, community, renewable energy, and inspirational programming. Those needing energy assistance, food, clothing, or freedom from the cycle of homelessness will find that plus much more on NLEC TV. Now, you can receive NLEC TV by going to 24.2 on your television set or putting the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. For further information, call 314-436-2424 or go to NLECSTL.org. That's NLECSTL.org. And welcome back. My guest is Boyne Smotherson. He's a Councilman in the University City from the Third Ward. Uh, boy, uh, when we were leaving, I wanted to ask you about uh, Joe Edwards. He's developing that Del Mar Loop area, and he has so many businesses over there, and now the trolley's coming in. Will that supply any benefits to the Third Ward other than bringing tax revenue to the University City itself? But will that help you, or will it have any effect on this uh, I-70 corridor? Well, I don't think I don't necessarily think that it's going to have any effect on the I seventy corridor. Mm -hmm. But what I actually believe is that it is going to be a benefit uh, for the citizens, for the city of University City, mm -hmm. once the trolley 
is is fully operational and open to the public. Okay. And right now, as you know, it, there has been delays and delays, and I think right now they're in training. Yeah. So we don't know specifically when that opening day will be. But I think eventually it can be a benefit to you city and also to the third ward. Okay. So, I mean, the city hall's right there at the loop right there. It, it ends <laughs> right at city hall. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. That okay. is absolutely and correct. So that's where you'd be holding your meetings. Right. But uh, so that's got some effect, positive effects, hopefully, will spill over to the third ward. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Simply because of the interest uh, in the trolley and the and hopefully the... Um, the the community at large and the interest that it'll bring in the, in and to the to you city sure okay, absolutely sure. but uh, you're mainly concerned about the uh, new development and your city says olive dash i one seventy redevelopment has potential to benefit University City so once again for those who may have joined us late why is this important to you and to the University City area well it's important to me because as I said previously that University City and that commercial corridor of Olive mm -hmm. has actually not developed the way that Olivet has and the way that Crevecore has over the years. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I think that and so I think it's important that we start getting into that age, the age now of bringing in economic commercial businesses that are going to help with the city services because our city has been uh, so dependent on the bedroom tax players mm -hmm. to, to pay for the services. And now we can actually step into that commercial business and, and, and bring that commercial advantage to University City. Okay, so the person living on Olive and Sutter, Olive and, and, and Ridgeland, how, what benefit will this be to them? Well, the benefit is actually going to be to them is it even in the short term, mm -hmm. it's going to immediately start funding, bringing funding sources to the third ward. Mm -hmm. It's going to increase their property value. Okay. And, and that's a good thing because it's going to give them equity in their homes. Okay. And so, uh, and again, there's going to be immediate impact and the attention that it's actually going to bring to University City. It may eventually help with the city services in that there may be services that we no longer have to charge the residents for mm -hmm. on a yearly basis and that the city can just absorb simply because of this revenue source that we're now bringing into the city. Okay. River to Pair, you know, uh, some of the homes flood. Yes, sir. Uh, very heavily some, and, and downpours in the university. Will this help that? Area? Well, this is not necessarily going to help in that regard mm -hmm. because okay. we are working with MSD, and MSD does, in fact, have a project okay. that will be uh, that should be actually started and completed by 2023, mm -hmm. and that is and that should help with the basement backups and and sewage overloads that we have in University City. Okay, so once again, how can they reach you, and why should they reach you? Well, uh, again, my name is Boyne Smotherson, Third Ward City Councilman. Okay. And, uh, you you and, talk really fast, boy. And I know, I do understand that, and I do apologize. Yeah, uh, I but, just want people to relax who you are and how they reach you. Yeah. Right, and my phone number again is 314-726-9572. So when do they, uh, you say there's a deadline on this uh, meeting about this side, 71 to 70? Quarter. Yes, sir. And, and well, there's, there's it's not necessarily a deadline, but mm -hmm. what's happening is that we're in the early stages. And again, I say mm -hmm. early stages of this process. Okay. And right now we're working on getting the funding for this project. Okay. And that TIF Commission's meeting is August 23rd. And that meeting is going to be held at the University City High School Auditorium. And, uh, and, and again, that meeting will probably be the last meeting, and they'll probably make a recommendation after that meeting ends. Great. Wayne Smotherson, thank you. They can reach you, right? Yes, sir. Thank Any you. more information. All right. It's always good seeing you. You too. And uh, it's always good seeing you too. And I hope it's good you seeing us here at the New Life Evangelistic Center. We're 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri, between Page and the Rock Road, but right off of Midland. So come by, bring some food for those who need needs of sandwiches. Bring some clothing. Bring something that will help the poor. We sincerely hope that you will continue to support the new life at Patrick Center. I'm Bernie Hayes. Have a great day. See you next time. Mm -hmm.